Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it the joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder on the Good Life Devotion every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into exhibiting the divine life. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times. Do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform by all means don't miss the good life devotion any day now welcome to today's episode with dr david Binden. praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord hallelujah wow how are you doing i believe you are doing great wow it's been such a great week and uh, we have had some fellowship along the lines of hearing the voice of God and I know that you are going to have these teachings as a place play them throughout the night in your radio in your vehicle everywhere until you have become one that can hear God clearly in every circumstance of your life Okay, right, so um, that's what we've been dealing with in this week, how to hear the voice of God. We started off by looking at the fact that hearing the voice of God is an art, a spiritual art, a spiritual skill that must be learned, practiced until you master. But that's part of the fact that everybody desires to hear God and children of God desire that more than even others. Yet not many here because it's an art that must be learned and practiced to master. We proceeded to look at why you must hear the voice of God. Don't joke with it. Because real success on this earth is not possible until you can clearly hear the voice of God. Number two, not hearing the voice of God is not as simple as I've not heard the voice of God. It is dangerous. You may become overly dependent on those who have the gift of revelation or you may ignore the, the, the voice of God completely in your life and begin to live by instincts and the flesh senses of the body or you become easily deceivable by Satan. There's a way that seems right by the end are the ways of death. Or you begin to have painful experiences in life because of costly mistakes you'll be making. Your life will be like a ship on the sea without a compass. That shouldn't be you. We now proceed to look at the fact that yes, you want to hear. But hearing God begins with making yourself capable of hearing. If you want to hear what is being said on the local radio station, you must first have a radio receiver. That makes you capable of tuning to the frequency. How do you make yourself capable? By seasoning your entire being, spiritual and body, through the profuse exposure to the word of God and becoming genuine in your willingness to hear. Because some say, I want to hear God but they, they want God to speak according to their terms. So in such cases, if what God wants to say is not in line with what they want, they will not even think it is God. There are certain times that people have actually bound the devil when it was God speaking to them because what was coming to them wasn't pleasing according to their fleshly desires. So if you are not genuine, you wouldn't hear God. So someone say, I'm going on waiting to hear God, but the thing you want to hear, do you already have preconceived ideas as to how God should speak? Or are you really willing that whatever God will say, you are willing to take it? Then we looked at, now that you have the radio receiver, what is the frequency of God's voice? 
We said we're going to discuss for we looked at two. God speaks to you in the voice of the inner witness of the spirit, which we saw in Romans 8, 16. The spirit himself bears witness to our spirits that we are the sons of God. Then we went to look at the second one, which is the authoritative voice. While they were ministering, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. We tried to differentiate the two by saying that the inner witness is a quiet knowing, but it is so certain and sure that you don't doubt it. And it comes with the peace of God. You know it, no matter what anybody is saying. Though there may be challenges of what would the world think about it, and sometimes your desires which are not sanctified, if you keep on practicing, those challenges will dissolve. Concerning the authority voice of God, we say that it is much louder and forceful, often used by God when maybe you are missing the first one or when he wants something to be done urgently or something that is demanded. It often comes like, do this, don't do that, go here, don't go here. I see the instructions. How do you hear that one? They come to you as thoughts, which are loud enough to be as though you were hearing a voice. The challenge to that one is because since it is also thoughts, if you are not mature, you may think it is your own thoughts. But as you grow, you grow to know when it is God speaking and yourself thinking. But as you keep mature, you get to a place where divinization takes place and there's no more difference between your thoughts and that of God. Then you don't need to have a challenge. Go back and watch those messages for further clarity. We're going to move forward today to look at the second part of how God speaks to you. Shall we share a word of prayer? Oh, maskete brakon dali hasos ke braka di jon da bariko shadi kalabade saka babaya rama kuntari kasete ke baya bada mo shaki braki sonda baya katabaya. In the name of Jesus, I beam for the rays of divinity, and by these words they are made to be excellent hearers of the voice of God. Hallelujah, praise God. So today we'll look at two other ways of God speaking to us. Two other frequencies and they are the voice of the conscience witness and spectacular revelations so two more ways that God speaks to us he speaks to you by the conscience witness and he speaks to you by spectacular revelations so remember in all the four that we are talking about this week the voice of God through the inner witness of the spirit with your spirit. The voice of God through the authoritative voice of the spirit to your thoughts. Then we now have the voice of God by the conscience witness and the voice of God by spectacular revelations. Let's take the first one. The voice of God by the conscience witness. Romans chapter 9 Verse 1, King James Version says that. Romans 9, 1. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. I say the truth and lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. So Paul was saying something that looked incredible. And Paul said, if what I'm saying is not of God, I would have known. I'm saying the truth in Christ. And I also know it is God's voice. The word is the one saying it because my conscience in the Holy Ghost also bears me witness. So there is something called the witness of the conscience. Which is a way you know how God is speaking. So it's kind of a voice of the spirit. We put here that the conscience is the fourth faculty of the soul in addition to the mind, the will, and the desire. If you have watched the Gula Devotion thing about two or three years ago, I took time to teach on the soul. What the soul is. There are a lot of definitions of the soul. Of course, we are not saying that what you know is wrong, but we are sharing with you what by the revelation of the spirit we know to be the soul. The soul of a person is an extension of his spirit. That requires the body to function on this earth. So that is why at the disconstitution of a person, those who die, 
they don't separate into three parts, spirit, soul, and body. No. It's two parts. The Bible says that when they die, what happens is that the body goes to the earth and the spirit goes to the one who made it. Two parts. So where is the soul then? The soul is part of the spirit. And that's why soulish faculties are still maintained even in hell. In Luke 16, when the rich man was in hell, he could see, he could be testy, he could talk. But he didn't have his body. How was he talking? How was he thirsty? They were all part of the spirit. That's why in the scriptures, in a lot of places, soul and spirit are interchangeably used. Why? The soul is an extensional function of the spirit. And the soul has four faculties. We have the faculty of the conscience, which is a center for judgment. We have the faculty for the will, which is the center for decision. Then we have the faculty of the mind, which is the center for reasoning, analysis, and intellectual work. And we have the faculty of desire, which is the center for passions, emotions, and affections. I've thought extensively on these. You need to understand your soul. Okay? All right. So the conscience is one of the four faculties of the soul. Now, when people are not born again and they take on wicked acts, the Bible says that they do evil and their consciences don't respond to them anymore. But when someone is born again, there is, there is a reviving of the Holy Spirit that takes place. And the person's conscience becomes revived to become a right judgment center. So the judgment center of the born again is awakened to be able to judge his actions again. In fact, that center of the conscience is a matter of yes or no. When you want to do something, you just know this is wrong, this is right. It's the conscience that gives that kind of judgment. Now, the spirit of God in the born again can use the conscience also to confirm or otherwise let you know whether what you are about to do or what you are receiving is of him. So we put here that. So based on the level of the truth of God's word that a person knows, your conscience can straightforward tell you when you are right or when you are wrong on some issues. Remember the caveat is based on the truth you know. Because there are certain things that if you don't know, your conscience will not even know enough to say it is right or wrong. So God knows your level of knowledge of God's word. And so if the matter is within the level that your conscience can give judgment, if you can hear the inner witness and you can hear the authoritative voice, he will use your conscience to speak to you. Are you following? We put here that God also uses this faculty to speak to us, the faculty of the conscience. It tells you clearly this thing is wrong. This thing is right. It can force you, but it will tell you. If it says wrong and you go ahead and misbehave, when you finish, you have the nagging of the spirit there because you went against your conscience. So if you say you don't know, and by the time you want to move on that line, there's a straight no. It's God telling you through the witness of the conscience that that is wrong. That is the third way God speaks to his children. The witness of the conscience. Straightforward, yes or no. The reason why we are sharing these various ways with you is to know the various ways that God speaks to you so that you can know and incline your ears. It is not so that you can choose one and say, ask for me, God, you know I don't like complex things. Just say yes or no to me. So you want to go and do something, you say, one, two, three, four, five, God, yes or no. Four, five, six, seven, eight, yes or no. Don't go and play those kind of games with God. Okay? He decides which of the ways to speak to you based on how you relate with him and what he thinks you can hear best. Okay? So learn all. Season yourself for all. Be genuine for all. 
and look out for which way he speaks. Okay? All right. The fourth way God speaks to you is if he doesn't get your attention through the inner witness, he doesn't get your attention through the authoritative voice, and even through the conscience, one of the ways he will speak to you is to get your attention in a spectacular revelation. So in that case, he uses dimensions of dreams, dimensions of visions, dimensions of trances, and even dimensions of audible voices. So dreams, visions, trances, audible voices, these are all spectacular revelations. And they are good ways the Lord speaks to people. Especially if they, are, if they don't learn to hear him in the inner witness and the other two ways that we've discussed. Now, apparently, a good number of people love these spectacular revelations, yet they are not the commonest way God speaks to you. In your everyday decision, for instance, if you are not asleep, how are you going to dream? Unless you are in the trance or vision dimension. And if God hasn't opened your eyes to see open visions, how are you going to see throughout the whole day? It means you always wait till night to get direction. You have acted wrongly before direction will come. If you don't get a direction before the day comes. Are you following? The truth is that God doesn't use this kind of means all the time. He doesn't often use it in your life. Most of the times when you are matured, these ones come for, for the purposes of other clarifications. Sometimes some of the things that may be tough for God to get your attention, then he goes to these dimensions. Look at Peter. Who was going to come and talk to Peter enough to enter a Gentile's house and preach? It was going to be challenging. But when he went into that trance and saw that vision and heard, arise, go with them. God used various means within that particular time. More than one way of speaking. Peter arose and nothing could stop him from going to the Gentile's house. But if maybe God was waiting to give him a knowing, he may not pick it because that is not the usual way he would, he would even think God was leading him. Are you following this? So most of the time when God speaks and you don't hear in other ways, then he comes this way. Let me show you clearly that this is scriptural. Job chapter 33 verse 14. The Bible says that. Look at this. It says, For God may speak in one way or in another. Yet man does not perceive it. You see where he's going. He's going somewhere. You let me finish it. Verse 15. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men, while slumbering on their beds, then he, he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction in order to turn man from his deed. And conceal pride from man. He keeps back his soul from the pit. And his life from perishing by the sword. What is he saying here? Ultimately, God wanted to turn this man from wrong works. God wanted to remove him from ways of pride, arrogance, arguing with God. He wanted to deliver his soul from the pit. God wanted him not to perish by the enemy's sword. God came to him, inner voice, you're not here. Authoritative voice, you're not here. Conscience, you're not here. So God waits. When he's asleep and he's slumbering, then God shows him images of the ways that if he goes, this danger should be. Because it appeals to his senses clearly. He wakes up, God gets his attention now. Are you following so God says that by the time you come to visions and night dreams and all that, you would have already spoken. Look at verse 14. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive. So usually when, by the time you're talking about dreams, visions, trances and all that, it means God might have tried to get your attention through the other means. 
And it happens to all of us. You know, sometimes based on what you don't know yet from God, you, you, you don't expect him to say some things. So if even he's trying to say that quietly, you won't even think it is him. You won't pick it up. But through these dramatic means which appeal to the senses, everybody can connect and easily understand. So if I say this, some may think some way, but the truth is that these spectacular revelations are the lowest because God has to use senses somehow. Okay, you have to see, you have to hear. Like things as though you were awake for you to, to agree. But the other ones where it's a knowing, it's a higher dimension. It's for those who have matured. You see? But many people rather love dreams and visions and the rest. Maybe, of course, many are so yet to grow. Is, is there anything wrong with dreams and visions and trances? No. It is an authentic way that God speaks. But if God speaks to you dreams and visions, don't stay there. And so, okay, as for me, I get to know things in dreams. Another reason why God doesn't use these ones much is because they can easily be counterfeited by Satan. When you go into trance world, you can see many things, including what Satan is showing you. So again, if you don't know the word of God, you can't know which vision or trance is not of God. But when you know God and when you mature, when you have a dream and a vision, you know. Are you following this? So God doesn't use dreams all the time, trances all the time, visions all the time, because Satan can easily counterfeit those things. But when it comes to the word, which becomes the primary member by which God bears witness with you, Satan can hardly counterfeit that. Are you following? All right, so I believe this week, if you put all that we have learned together, you should begin on a journey of learning, practicing to master the art of hearing God. It's an art. You must learn, practice until you master. You must hear. It's necessary because your success on this head is hinged on it. If you don't, you will be deceived as Satan. You will make costly mistakes. But how do you hear? Season yourself. Start a journey of just hearing God's word. If you do that, even unconsciously, you are seasoning your soul, your body, and your heart to know when God speaks and when it is not his voice. Then from there, begin to look out for him in these ways. Sudden knowings which come with peace. You can't tell how, but you just know that this is it. And you follow through and so it is. Number two, authoritative voice. Sometimes you hear in your thoughts, as if someone is speaking quite loud and forceful, is the authoritative voice. Number three, your conscience, state no or yes. Then, number four, spectacular revelations. You may have a dream, you may have a trance, a vision. You may even have God speaking to you audibly. These are spectacular, but they are not the regular ways that God uses. I believe you put all of these together, you should be fine for the week. We are going to come to you on the weekend edition of Metro TV, 10 p.m. tomorrow and on Sunday, 10 p.m. Then don't forget the omnibus combination on Light TV, 4 to 6 p.m. We're going to have a combination of one of our messages and feast on it. Let us pray that these truths go around the whole world and bring every son or daughter of God to a point where they can hear God daily and in every situation and they will never be deceived, shall we pray? Dear Father, we thank you. Our world has been made better because many more have stepped into hearing your voice after these truths have come to them in the name of Jesus. Where does this all begin from? It begins from being a child of God. Becoming one with the Holy Ghost. For all these things we've taught to make meaning, you must be a son of God. How do you become a son of God? The word became a person as Jesus lived on this earth and died and took away your sin and that of the world so that today you can easily come to him and receive his life. He rose again and ascended into heaven and is Lord. If you believe that and declare him as Lord, the life of God will enter you 
and you'll be generated to become a son of God. Come and do that, say this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I do believe that you came into this world and that you died for my sin and that of the world. You were raised from the dead and you ascended into heaven. You made eternal life available. Jesus, I declare you Lord of my life and by this I receive eternal life. Today, I am born again. If you are dancing with all your heart, then you are born again. Contact us and then we'll help you to grow in Christ. Surely, we are going to come away again next week as we take a look at another wonderful subject. But till then, life is good. Enjoy. If you just got born again today and would like to fellowship with us, call our numbers displayed and connect with any of our new creatures fellowship branches nearest to you. Dambai Pasa in Kwantan Takrade. Kaswa, Lagon, Tachiman, Tema New Town, Ashama New Town, Tema Ashaman, Gulf City, Nungwa, Inkonya, Kolegono Tree Speaking, Kolegono Gas Speaking, Kolegono English Speaking, The Multinationals Church or our virtual church online. We will be glad to fellowship with you. Do call us. Thank you for joining today's episode of your favorite Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Pendan. The Good Life Devotion is proudly brought to you by friends and partners of the Final Global Movement. For more information on how to become a partner, call us on 053-444-6907 or log on to our website finalglobalmovement.org Become a partner today and contribute to the global spread of God's message for the now. Follow us on our various social media handles and you will be blessed. Don't miss the Good Life devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life devotion with Dr. David Benden. Life is good. Enjoy. Enjoy.